graduates, family members, friends, faculty, and honored guests, welcome to Post University's 130th and 131st commencement ceremony. Yeah. The ceremony today is a culmination of all of our students' hard work and perseverance in a year that was like no other. Our learners have always had competing priorities, such as the, the demands of academic rigor, the work, the uh, family, and many athletes. And everybody is trying to keep some semblance of a social life. But the pressures and the stress of the pandemic created even more. The personal journey of our graduates and the grit they demonstrated through the COVID crisis is nothing short of incredible. This chapter, including your courage and most especially your grit, will remain with you for the rest of your journey. It's a testament to who you are. Remember this. Remember this time when things get challenging. You've been there, you've done it, you'll do it again. To our 2020 graduates, we promised you an in-person ceremony, and so we're very, we're just delighted to be able to deliver it to you. To our, tw please. To our 2021 graduates, thank you for sharing this incredible day with your 2020 peers. As I said earlier, the most important thing is we're all here together. During this morning's uh, uh, commencement ceremony, we, we had another group of students to welcome as well. Uh, in March of this year, Post University acquired American Sentinel University um, to create the American Sentinel uh, College of Nursing and Health Sciences. In a year when nurses were on the front lines of the COVID crisis and defined our ability to move forward as a nation, we could not be prouder to call these students Post Eagles. I'd like to uh, also take a moment to welcome those students who could not travel to campus today. But thanks to technology, they're watching us virtually through a live video feed. We're delighted that we can share this, con this graduation with all of our graduates. So to all of you joining through live stream, welcome. Now, please know that we're only going to be reading the names of those who are actually present and walking today, but all of our graduates' names will be scrolled across the screen on our live stream. Now, let me, uh, let me uh, take um, a few minutes and introduce the dais and some of our special guests. And I ask that each person stand as I call your name and then remain standing. And so if we could hold our applause until all those that are recognized are standing, unless you feel otherwise. I'm going to start with Dr. Elizabeth Johnson, our provost and our chief academic officer. Ms. Ms. Amanda Chinisky, the ADP valedictorian class of 2021. Kathleen Takeda. Main Campus Valedictorian Class of 2021. Dr. James Whitley, Dean of the John Burke School of Public Service and Education. Dr. Elaine Foster, Dean of the American Sentinel College of Nursing and Healthcare Sciences. Mr. Phil Dawson, Assistant Dean for the Undergraduate Business Programs of the Malcolm Baldred School of Business. Mr. Dylan Klein, Dr. Dylan Klein, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. 
Dr. Don Sherman, Dean of the School of Continuing Education. Peter Friedman, founder and president of the Friedman Media Group and today's commencement speaker. The Honorable Richard Blumenthal, United States Senator for the State of Connecticut. Dr. Terry Bainey, Professor of History and Political Science, as well as today's Grand Marshal. And I should also say that this upcoming academic year will be Dr. Bainey's 50th year teaching at Post University. <laughs> Ms. Erica Perega, who everybody has heard with her beautiful voice. The Reverend Joseph Chabot of Litchfield Hills Church in Bethlehem, whose son Daniel is also graduating today. Bobby Reese, Chief Operating Officer. Mr. Scott Allen, the Senior Vice President of Post University. And Mr. Salim Nujain, Post University's Board of Trustees. I would also like to acknowledge a few special guests in our audience, starting with Professor John Rolfing, who, yeah. Yeah, John, um, it's bittersweet that you retired, but he was, um, he retired in May after 23 years of service in our classrooms and our studios and remains a, prof a professor emeritus. Pro we do indeed. <laughs> Professor, Professor Annie, Abby Nemec, who is our outgoing president of the uh, Faculty Senate. Thank you, Abby, for your service to the Senate over the last three years. <laughs> the families of our 2020 and 2021 valedictorians, valedictorians <clears throat> Uh, including guests of uh, Jason Drake, Dake, Brianna Rotuno, yeah. Kathleen Takeda, yeah. and Amanda Chininsky, please stand to be recognized. I can't see you. Our 2019 and 20 and 2020 21. Student Government Association Presidents Andre, Andre Masser and Adesia Connolly Reed. <laughs> I'd also like to uh, recognize Frank and Sandy Montero and their family, who have been wonderful friends and incredible supporters of Post and have been incredible ph philanthropists for the betterment of the greater Waterbury community. Their son, Anthony, is also graduating today. <laughs> Frank is a, a wonderful past commencement speaker who emphasized the, the importance about thinking about possibilities and giving back. And a special thanks to Joe and Debbie Gugliotti and to Grant and Megan Copeland from Works, who have been just amazing supporters and advisors of Post University. Thank you. So please join me in a round of applause to thank all of these special guests. And now I'd ask that the faculty stand. Yeah, a round of applause. You know, whether they, whether they teach in person on the, on the uh, main campus or whether they teach virtually, um, this is a group of individuals, absolute professionals, who I am just honored to work with. They are absolutely among the best, and I am so proud of them. They are the epitome of post makes it personal. And I say that because I wish, you could, uh, I wish you could hear some of the conversations that they have behind the scenes about every one of you students to make certain 
that you're on the path to success. They define absolute dedication. So thank you. And also, we have many of our staff who are here working as volunteers today. Um, and they've worked very hard to make today a success. But I think the real accolade goes to what they do every day. It's not just faculty that makes you successful. Our staff is there behind the scenes, whether it's academic success council, whatever it is. There are 2,000 associates that are there to help you succeed. And so we thank them, too, for their tireless efforts. Now let's talk a little bit about the folks who are the center of attention. As soon to be post-university graduates, you are about to close one chapter of life and embark on an entirely new season. That feeling of pride and invincibility is inescapable. Something you sense that something new is about to happen. You and your peers have shown unprecedented resilience and grace during this generation-defining pandemic. The virus has turned the world upside down, and in particular, your final years at Post University. Our main campus students left campus for spring break in 2020 and never returned as in-person learners. For most of them, today is their first in-person reunion with their classmates and their faculty. For the past 18 months, no one could imagine the path that you would have, had, that you would have followed to arrive at today's celebration. You have shown strength, adaptiveness, perseverance, and humanity. You know, as I mentioned earlier, um, th these are attributes that, uh, when tested in adversity, will serve you well in life. Some of our life's greatest moments come from serendipity. We're reminded, especially over the last 18 months, that without health, we have nothing. We find a new appreciation for the things that were taken away from us and maybe taken for granted, such as the ability to hug a friend or your family. We don't always get to choose our situation, but we realize that we can choose how to react to the cards that have been dealt. The challenges we face throughout this journey make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. We learn that a difficult situation allows us to grow and test new skills and solutions. Each one of us has had the opportunity to look at the world from the inside out rather than from the outside in, and sometimes just sometimes, we must be willing to let go of our preconceived notions of life and adapt to the life that is unfolding before us. What you've learned is that we are all in this together. The virus has shown no boundaries and no borders. To fix this, business and society must work together. But we have to work together with an understanding of the importance and the benefit of embracing diversity in gender, religion, color, culture, sexual identity, and in thinking. We must embrace equity for all, empathy and compassion for all, inclusion for all, 
No exceptions. <laughs> Diversity, equity, inclusion, and acceptance is the root of innovation, as well as meaningful and lasting change in this world. When we work together, there isn't anything we can't conquer. Just a, 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 a one small example is uh, who would have thought two years ago that Post would, her, would host one of the first and largest drive through vac sites in Connecticut, right? It took many, many people from two great organizations between Post and Waterbury Health to figure this out. There was no playbook. Smart people with diversity of thought figured this out, turned, to be out, turned out to be a very successful and helpful VAC site for the betterment of our community. Thank you. My final point is the power of community. You're all responsible leaders forged by Post University. You will help, and frankly are helping, to define and shape this moment and going forward. This community, the Post University community, is a lifelong membership. And we will always be here for you. And you will be here for each other. Make us proud. When you reach your mountaintop, Remember to turn around and help the next person in line. Thank you.